What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School. Just wanted to uh, kind of continue on some of the videos I've been doing as far as uh, concealed carry. Uh, as you can see, I've kind of got some uh, different holsters, different guns laid out here, a few different knives, because uh, you always get asked, um, you know, what's an everyday carry for me? And that kind of varies, as you can kind of see here, as far as what I'm wearing. Um, one thing I will say about concealed carry is it's not something where, oh, I'm going to do it today, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's not really, I guess what you would say, a fashion statement, something that you wear or do periodically. Uh, concealed carry is something that needs to be done all the time if you're ready to take that step. And uh, it's just something that you need to make sure you are prepared for because uh, like I've discussed in other videos, uh, hesitation is going to be the, the key factor to uh, you going home or not. So just kind of go, go over a few things here. Uh, once you're ready to, to make that step, I usually keep a pocket knife on me, uh, depending on what I wear. And if you kind of want to know a little bit more about the holsters and some of the guns that I've got here, uh, that's all in the conceal carry and holsters video that I've done. So please go back in and uh, to check that out. And I've kind of gone through uh, these holsters. Uh, but this, as you can see, uh, does not have. And just so everybody knows, all these weapons are clear. Mags are out. So everything's clear. Anytime you're doing stuff like this, that's um, one of the biggest things is making sure the guns are clear. Uh, if you watch some of the police now, uh, especially with live PD out there, uh, they'll rack the weapon a couple of times. So if you, I'm not saying that you have to do that. That's it's just something I did, something that was kind of ingrained in me once I was in the military. Uh, but just make sure they are clear. Uh, most of your accidents kind of happen uh, usually when we're a little laxed on that. Um, you know, treat, treat every weapon as if it were loaded. So that's one of the main safety rules. So that's one thing you want to uh, do, make sure, you know, the gun is unloaded and uh, clear of everything. So, like I said, I like to carry a knife. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes I'll carry a flashlight. I don't always carry a flashlight. I do keep one, uh, two or three in the vehicle if I do need to carry. So it's not like I don't have them far away from me, um, especially if it's nighttime, depending on where I'm at. Yes, I'll you know, throw a little flashlight. I don't have any of those out here. You know, I, it's, I, the ones I do carry on me all the time, don't spend a lot of money on. Uh, they're not very big. I can get my hand around them in case I need to use it as a weapon as well. Uh, but some of the things that I carry uh, are a Glock 42, a Smith & Wesson shield, and a uh, Glock 23. Uh, the 42 I like, it's a little bit smaller, uh, like I was showing you. The holster doesn't have any type of belt clip or anything to uh, snap onto a belt. This is mainly a pocket holster. Uh, if I'm going to and from the gym or if I've just got to go somewhere quick, I'm throwing on some gym shorts. It's something I can drop in my pocket. It's not very heavy, kind of the shield's a, a little bit more heavier. and it, it doesn't weight my shorts down, you know, that I'm wearing, and it really, in my pocket, it really just looks kind of like a, uh, a wallet almost. I'm trying to get where you can see. See, so drop it in. It doesn't really print. You can't really see exactly. Like I said, it looks it's kind of an outline. It looks like I've got my wallet in, and then in my other pocket, that's where I'll keep my wallet keys. Um, and the cell phone, you know, just so it's not bulging out, drawing even more attention. You don't want anything behind it, you know, it's kind of get it pushed out there, it kind of starts to, to print a little bit. But that's, that's what I carry normally if I've got gym shorts, uh, gym shorts on. Uh, I've got a inside the waistband uh, for this, but if it's gym shorts, it's the pocket holster. I might sometimes carry this with the uh, inside the waistband. And as far as when I'm carrying gym shorts, 
Uh, this little 511 knife here is it's small, it's not heavy. If, if I do need to uh, go to a knife, I'm going to do, I'm not really going to get too much on knives right now. I'll touch on that in a, another video as far as uh, knives to carry, things like that, because uh, that is a, another option for you. You can say you don't want to carry a gun. You know, I have nothing against that. I have no problem with that. If you don't want to carry a gun, that's fine. I would at least carry uh, some type of knife with you. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to show you the ones that I, as far as an everyday carry for me. Like I said, it's very lightweight, um, not too big, gets the job done if I need to get it done. I'm kind of a fan of the, the Tonto as well, a little recurve Tonto here. Uh, but again, this is a, a 511, very inexpensive, uh, you know, good knife to, you know, cut and stab essentially if you need to cut and stab. If I'm summertime and just wearing just regular you know khaki shorts you know I'll have a like if I'll, I've discussed in the other videos I'll have a good belt on and then I've got a uh, inside the waistband kydex holster with the uh, shield that I carry uh, it's got the uh, snap to go around the belt uh, and it kind of swivels a little bit so when it's in the pants if you need to change the angle depending on you know where you want to carry I'm not going to say uh, any certain angle that you have to carry, carry what's comfortable uh, and as long as it allows you to get a good grip on the weapon when you're ready to draw that out. Uh, but this, um, this was very inexpensive holster, I'll be honest. I don't even remember <laughs> where I got it from. Uh, it might have been something that was, was given to me, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but this, uh, like I've discussed in the other video, is a uh, holster from uh, Ross Learn. Uh, he's taken some of our classes, does a great job with holsters. Uh, Black Mountain Holsters, CO.com uh, is, is an excellent place to uh, go and get uh, good Kydex holsters. I like this. I like the way it feels with the shield. Uh, it's very comfortable to wear. Um, and with the khaki shorts, I kind of have, I've got two different Kershaws here. Uh, one's a uh, self-assisted just kind of push on it with the thumb or spring assisted I'm sorry uh, and it just already deploys out for you so this is one that I like um, and then another Kershaw uh, it doesn't have the spring assist uh, what this has is I'll hold it out this has this little notch right up here at the uh, top of the blade it's called an Emerson wave uh, there's a couple of different knives out there uh, that use the uh, Emerson Wave, this is one of the uh, ones uh, from Kershaw. Uh, but what this does is it actually sits down in your pocket like this. So you can see right here, this is pointing up. So when you go to deploy it, this catches on the pants and swings right open. Or if you need to go ahead and say, you're not really sure what's about to happen, you go ahead and just kind of get it out of your pocket. You're holding it in your hand and uh, just to just to be on the safe side, say if you kind of got it hidden behind your back, you do have a nice little uh, spot for your thumb to open that up. Or if you need to uh, catch it on the side of your pants and swing it out, all this has to do is catch on something and it's going to uh, deploy right out. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, Emerson Wave and knives with the Emerson Wave. Again, you can see I'm also a big fan of the uh, Tonto. Uh, but uh, this is a good a good knife. This one here is something I bought just because I like the way that it looked. Uh, I was kind of carrying it, but as you can see, compared to the two Kershaw, well, these are fairly the same size, but still, this is a little bit lighter. This is a lot. All this on the side here, where this is composite. This is more metal, it's spring assisted, it's got the old karambit. Um, I bought it just, I'm a karambit fan, I thought it was a, a nice little uh, knife. It's got a real good edge to it. I like the way that it had the curves, some are a little too dramatic, uh, but again, you put it in your thumb. I, I'm not a big fan of carrying the karambit uh, if you've never really trained with it, because as you can see, compared to 
another blade. See, this is good if you need to, to stab. I'm not saying you can't stab with this, but you see, if you go straight in for a stab, it's going to, you know, essentially pierce. Where this, you're going to have to kind of come down. So if you're just stabbing, as you can see, it's not going to go in unless you put a lot more force. I'm not going to do that. But I did carry it for a little bit. I just, something I wanted to bring out as an option. People, you know, like the crumbits. But, uh, you know, a small little 511. Uh, the Kershaw's, if I've got on a little bit bigger shorts or, or jeans, if I'm wearing jeans, uh, these would be one of the knives that I would carry. Uh, or bigger shorts, gym shorts. I'm going to go with the 511 with my Glock 42. And then, of course, I've got the Glock 23, which is a little bit bigger. This was the first thing I started with, my first holster, Galco holster. Um, and then once summertime it's a little bulky I've got a single stack <clears throat> excuse me mag that I normally use to keep it light I've got uh, two of those you know you're usually one in the car one if I got to carry it with me um, and then I've also got the black point holster here it's an outside the waistband it's still very as you can kind of see doesn't have a huge profile to it once you get the gun down in there still not too big of a profile if I've got a little bit bigger of a shirt on uh, in, in the summertime I'll carry this it doesn't print that bad uh, but most of the time in the summertime it will be the Galco sometimes I just like to carry this just because you know it's you know essentially my I'm not gonna say it was the first handgun I ever shot this is the first one you know, that I ever got, you know, kind of for myself. It wasn't given to me or anything like that. Plus, I've always been a fan of the, the Glock 23. I know some people are going to be like, oh, those things explode. Yeah, you just got to change the barrel out. You know, I've got a barrel, you know, getting ready to get. So, just a, a, a good gun to carry. I like it. And I've also liked the shield and the, the Glock 42. So, they, they are good guns to carry. Very good very comfortable again like I've discussed in the other videos is finding that uncomfortable comfortable to find what feels good to you they like said this is good I can make adjustments with it you know as I need to now I'm not saying that's something sit there and fool with it that's a bad thing a lot of people are guilty of I'll be honest I was guilty of it you know the first time I started carrying you feel like oh it's gonna fall out it's not in the right spot but just don't I know it's it's a hard thing to do, but don't be reaching back, fooling, sliding it around. If you've got to make an adjustment when you get out of your vehicle, get out of your vehicle, make the adjustment, and go. If it rides down a little bit, just let it ride. You know, if it's something where you you know you're stepping into the bathroom, you know, go ahead and make your adjustments. But don't be constantly fooling with it, pulling at it, and drawing attention to it. You're only going to make it worse on yourself. The purpose of Concealed carry is to be concealed. If you're constantly touching it, people are going to know it's there. So I've, I've had people ask. I wanted to do a little video just to kind of give everyone an idea. You know, other people are going to have different options. I mean, you've got, especially with the popularity growing with the uh, SIG P320, you know, I'm starting to see a lot more of those in our pistol classes. So th there's other options that are out there. I'm not saying this is what you have to carry but these are some of the things that I carry uh, you know on an everyday basis and it's it's every day but yes I when I came up here I keep knocking this over it's gonna get on my nerves I have on gym shorts this is in my armrest uh, so if I've got to get out somewhere I take it out of my armrest put it in my pocket before I get out of the car get out of the car and go yes I know it's a 380. I know I'm only limited to six rounds, but with training and proper shots, those six rounds can do some damage. And with the shield, the extended mag, you're getting eight. The uh, regular mag, you're getting uh, seven. Single stack on the Glock 23, you're getting 10. Double stack, you're getting two more. So just options. Remember, 511. 
a little 511s, a little Tonto recurve. Um, I think it's BTC Tonto recurve. The BTC's uh, born to cut, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, good knife. Two Kershaws. Got the. <laughs> I can't even get it out now. Look at that. Spring assisted. And then the one with that I'm the huge fan of, the Emerson Wave. And that's pretty much it. That's, you know, it would be an everyday carry depending on, like I said, it really depends on what I'm wearing. But the most important thing is once you get a permit, you've made that, I'm not saying go out right now, get a permit and start carrying. That, that's, that's not what I'm saying. It's, it's something that you really need to think about because when you carry, you're carrying a weapon and that weapon is eventually going to take somebody's life one day. Uh, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's, it's, it's when it's going to happen. I hate to say that, but you know that's the, the world that we're living in now. You need to make sure you're carrying, uh, especially for us here at the school, uh, four things that you need to be well aware of, and I'm going to touch a little bit more on those in some of our upcoming seminars. So uh, proper mindset, situational awareness, skill proficiency, and one thing that I've been lax on here lately, and a lot of us that push to the wayside is physical fitness. Um, you need to be physically fit because there might be situations where you're drawing your gun to be defensive to get you out of there. And if you're out of breath within five to 10 steps of trying to get out of there, you're gonna be in trouble. Or say you're out with you know, your buddies, or you're just out somewhere in general. If you're making a commitment to carry you're making a commitment to help other people. So if somebody's shot in the leg, you might have to pick them up and get them out of there. You might have to drag them out of there, uh, depending on what's going on. So being physically fit is, is something that we don't need to uh, skip anymore. Uh, like I said, I know I've been lax. I've started uh, getting back in the gym, getting back into the swing of things and getting my physical fitness and uh, my body back right. I'm sorry, my mouth's a little dry here. But like I said, this is an everyday carry for me, depending on what I'm wearing. Once you, like I said, make that decision, find what's good for you. Uh, we've got classes that uh, will help you along the way. Uh, some of the seminars that we're gonna be doing are kind of a, uh, a firearm seminar, just if you're new or wanting to learn a little bit before you actually go and buy one. Uh, that seminar is gonna be uh, very good. Just give you some of the, the basics and we'll have some different weapons for you to put in your hand. And then we've also got a fundamentals and safety class, which will start you more toward how to hold the gun, trigger control, and actually going over all the fundamentals uh, that we kind of talk about in the uh, seminar. Then we've got uh, our intro classes. You know, th those are four ones where you've already gone. You've taken, possibly taken your CWP. We're not saying that you have to. You know, if you're just wanting to keep a gun in your home or in your vehicle, you don't necessarily want to carry it on you. Our intro classes are very good for if you bought your first rifle, shotgun, you know, whatever it might be. Our basic firearm class is going to kind of take our simulation and live fire to give you an idea of how some of these weapons are going to fire, some of the recoil they're going to have, so you can kind of get an idea of, of what it's like. But, Definitely go out if you've got gun ranges near you that will allow you to rent some of the weapons you know, that you're looking at to try them out. I highly recommend doing that. Um, but like I said, the basic firearm course will have some of these out so you can get an idea. You know, they're the, it's a 380, it's a 9mm and a 40. Uh, those are the little bit more common calibers uh, that people are going to carry. Yes, there's people out there with 45s. <clears throat> I'm not a fan. I shouldn't say that. Me, I don't like to carry a 45. It's a little, most of them are a little bit bigger. They do make compact, still a little bulky, but there's people out there that carry 45s, but what we'll have available for you is really what I've got here because this is, you know, the common calibers you're gonna see as far as, you know, what's carrying. Uh, I've got some 22 revolvers and pistols, if that's something that you wanna stay with as well, just to get an idea, you know, of what they're gonna feel like not going to have the recoil that some of these are going to have uh, but this is some of the stuff that I do uh, when I carry or that I carry and kind of gives you an idea so I uh, hope this helps everybody out 
Uh, thanks for all the support that we've been getting so far. Please uh, continue to like our videos, subscribe, share them. Uh, it's much appreciated and a big help to us. And you know, I hope that I'm able to help everyone out there uh, make a decision on something they would like to carry. And uh, as always, remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.